Yuck. Oh yeah. Nobody likes you. <laughs> Welcome to Destination Station. This is uh, the episode four of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is a good IPA. And Martin, yeah, what's some Guinness? <laughs> yeah, Guinness is good. Uh, Martin, what's brewing in the gaming industry today? All right, I actually got a, quite a few things here on a uh, on my page, but the first one kind of deals with the gaming and movie aspect. But Trump was speaking at a meeting on school safety, made a nice little remark that said that uh, mature and violent content in video games and movies is a potential cause of youth violence. He goes on to say that putting a rating, rating system on movies and games would, would help in that effect. And it's like, well, has he looked into this that much? I mean, I'm sure he's... He, he, well, I mean, he's a president. He's not a great one, but he's a good one. But I'm sure he's looked into... The ratings, there's the ESRB, there's the movie rating system. I'm not sure what that's called. Uh, yeah, but the, the Motion but, Picture yeah, uh, Rating a, Association. Yeah, but there's already rating systems for this stuff. And, I mean, I do understand there are ways around it, but still, with games and movies, you can't go to a rated R movie without a parent consent or someone over 17 buying the ticket for you. That's so, what it's supposed to be. Yeah, and then with movie or games, you can't go in and buy a thirteen-year-old can't go buy Grand Theft Auto without someone of age, seventeen or older, to purchase it. So if you're wanting to combat violent video games and movies or mature video games and movies, look at the parents. Yep. Like, I mean, they had to have a parent or someone, an older brother, an older sister, aunt, uncle. Somebody of age had to have purchased that for that kid. Or, you know, just, just monitor what your kids are watching on the television and playing on the television. Because, I mean, even, let's just say that a lot of, a, a lot of kids out here do digital. Digital mm -hmm. is getting more and more big. And they got their dad's or their mom's credit card or debit card saved to their console or, or their computer or whatever. And they're downloading these games and the parents don't know but what the hell they're playing. all it takes is the parent to peek in and see what they're watching. Watch for five minutes. Watch yeah. and see what they're playing. That's all yeah. it is. I mean, he's going into, you know, maybe they or the government in general have to make a rating. Well, there's already a rating system. The government doesn't need to step in. That's a slippery, slippery slope. As far as it's concerned with the government stepping in to rate video games and movies, they, they've already got it covered. Leave it alone. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's done. Just yeah, I, I don't think that that. I think that's bizarre. I think he's just looking. I think he's just kind of like shooting some stuff out of his ass right now, as far as looking for he's trying a to make reason. excuses. Why he's this making, stuff's he's making excuses. But also, he gets so much money from the uh, what is it? The uh, weapon, the firearm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They get he gets like thirty million a year is what what is said. So now he's trying to say that, and I'm not trying to get all political on my channel because that's not what it's about. Um, uh, so, but basically, with, with the whole thing with them saying that, uh, you know, what, the teachers can carry yeah. guns and stuff like that. Well, that's just more money in their pocket, and that's more carriers that that are going to pay to be able to carry and buy weapons. I mean, you got to kind of look at it that way. But anyways, but, on, but yeah, but on back this, to games. it's just. They don't need to step in. We, we they've already, you know, ESRB is already there. They they've got stuff to cover this. Just that that's not the rating system's fault. That's people buying games and not being educated on it. Parents just need yeah. to be educated on what their kids are playing and watching. That's yeah. it. And then we've got uh, next one is uh, Payday Two is now on Switch. Oh, it's, is it? Yep, yeah, it's been out for a while, you know, a long while on every other system, but they've now added it on Switch. And I will uh, state, you know, IGN did give it a 7.4, and one of their... I haven't played it on Switch. I've always wanted it. Haven't tried it out. It looks awesome. It looks like a badass game. But with the Switch version, there's no voice chat. So it's a very multiplayer centric game. You've got to use teamwork and co-op. If you can't talk to your teammate, you're going to kind of fail. There's a new game that the creators of Payday is coming out with, isn't there? Is it is that the GTFO? Get the fuck out. Yeah, think, you've told I, me about that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I think I think they're making GTFO. I could be wrong, but I know they're making something, and I think it's GTFO. Mm -hmm. And that game looks. I think that game looks mm -hmm. really fun. I think that's the Left for Dead three that we yeah, never got. Get the, well, Left for Dead. Well, we'll go down the list a little bit here. Left for Dead three. 
would be the uh, new Rainbow Six Siege mode, Outbreak. They said that is like the continuation or spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. You start out as a team of three, three human players working as a team. You start out in one location. You have to make it through this alien horde that almost looks like alien Mutants. zombies. Yeah, you make it through it to your one point. You know your. Oh, is it like is it like situations but with aliens? Instead yeah, it of it is. being like like I, I'm okay. thinking that it might be something like that. Yeah, but you make it to your objective, then it turns into how Rainbow Six kind of is, where you board up the building, you know, board up the windows, set your stuff up, set your traps, you know, barricade yourself in the house, and then you've got to, I guess, defend yourself against these waves. Once it's over. Then you have to move to the next objective, objective and fight your way through. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Three maps, three players each. Um, oh, it's only it, three. Yeah, it starts with three maps, but what they're saying from going from one objective to the other, it sounds pretty cool. I've also heard commentary of uh, your characters are not going to have banter back and forth with each other, so it actually gives you some investment into your character. So when you pick a, this operator versus this operator. They will have banter amongst themselves, so it kind of gives the operators a personality while you're playing this mode. Oh, okay. Well, I, what what's my confusion is like, it, it, I mean, let's just say Rainbow Six Siege, their DLC is kind of confusing as it is, mm -hmm. and it's a constantly growing game. I love what they're doing. It's one of my favorite games, but their DLC with Year Two and Year Three and all that kind of stuff, the way you got to buy it and stuff, it's kind of confusing the way they do it. It, it is. But with but with this outbreak mode with this alien shit it's um i think it's just they say, i don't know if it's a limited time or if they're just talking about like an event that's like march 6th through like march like 18th or something like that uh, it's only on sale i could be wrong about those dates limited price but yeah they're confusing on their their yeah, advertising it's, on it's it. like is that the only time that this mode's going to be available or are we going to be able to play this Ongoing. I, I think it's ludicrous if they make the mode only them dates. They put that much time in yeah. to making that extra dialogue, those three maps. Maybe it's all like, of maybe that. it's March sixth through March eighteenth. But it's free. But they maybe. Yeah, see that, and that's where they, you know, Ubisoft comes a lot, a lot of times with some kind of confusing advertising. But that's one of them. You, but, you don't understand kind of what they're saying. You've got to read between the lines. Ubisoft is one of my favorite gaming companies, though. I have to say it, man. Like, everything that they put out, I pretty much play. Yeah. Yeah, they are really good at what they do. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, honestly, off a little tangent here, off what we're doing, one of the games that I can't stop playing recently, I just got a Switch last week, Mario Plus Rabbids is an amazing game. I wrote it off when it first came out. I didn't even own a Switch, but I was like, why the hell would I buy that game? That looks stupid. I don't like the rabbits. I think they're annoying as crap in any of the games they were in. I just don't care for that stuff. I know some people do. I don't. And I, I do like Mario. I like that universe. But the more I looked into it and researched it and then I bought the game, I can't put it down. It is an amazing, fun game. If you like XCOM, pick this up. It's it's awesome. It's a comedy version of XCOM. But it's it's awesome. That was on a little tangent there, but I do love that game. It yeah. is, it's just fun. Martin's recommendation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will get it if it goes on sale. I have a Switch. I love my Switch. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a game that I've been kind of iffy on because I heard it's really hard. And I don't really know much about Rabbids, so it's kind of yeah. like one of those games I'm going to have to get on a deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the next little topic we've got is, uh, you know, DICE going on. And they are giving out some of their awards. It says uh, Zelda took home four awards at DICE. They got Game of the Year, Adventure Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, and Outstanding Achievement in Game Design. So Zelda won the most awards of any other game. They hit it with four. And then, uh... I heard they're already working on another Zelda. Oh, I'm sure they will be. I don't know if it'll be coming out anytime soon or if they're maybe going to expand on this one a little bit or just go on to the next one. I'm not sure. Maybe do, like, a Ocarina of Time, and then a year later... You know, Majora's Mask came out. Do like a remastered and then well, a new well, game. Well, you had, you know, Zelda Ocarina of Time on 64, and then they came out with Majora's Mask. And that was, I think, a year apart, a little over a year. But they just used the same assets as they did for Ocarina of Time and just kind of changed, you know, made a new story and stuff, but used all the assets. 
Okay. So that was able for them to cut down production time because they just use everything they already made. Okay. They just rearranged it. Yeah. So they might do that with Breath of the Wild. I mean, they've got a lot of crap there. Uh, we also got uh, Cuphead got three wins. Uh, outstanding Achievement in Animation, Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction, and Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition. Then you have Horizon Zero Dawn. Fun game. Snipper Clips, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and Lone Echo slash Echo Arena with two awards each. What is that? Is that, is that a game? I don't know. I've never heard of Lone Echo Echo Arena. I just know that they were saying the. Uh, is that I, a I read, dolphin game? <laughs> I don't know, man. Because I read, I was just reading the list of the awards, what was given, and everything else. And um, of course, like I said, Zelda hit it top of the night with four. Cuphead got three, and then you've got a. Uh, like I said, Horizon Zero Dawn, Snipper Clips, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, all got two apiece. And then it says this Lone Echo slash Echo Arena got two apiece. And maybe the, I'm not a PC gamer. Maybe that's a PC game. I don't. My, my computer sucks. Don't have the funds to buy a good one. Otherwise, I would play some PC games. Xbox One X. But that's where it's at. About the extent of my PC gaming is StarCraft 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably me too. Yeah. Age of Empires and StarCraft 2. Yeah, I play StarCraft and I got a... Age of Empires, another one's got announced, Guild but I haven't Wars seen nothing too. else on it. I'm just waiting for it. Basically. And then we've got Mario Odyssey talking about another Switch game. They have just released that they're adding the, uh, they just added a, a balloon hunting mode for the end game. So as long as you beat the campaign of Mario Odyssey and your Switch is hooked up to the internet, it will update for free this new mode where you can go hide balloons and you can go hunt for other players hidden balloons. So it's like a hide and seek mini game. For balloons? Yeah, you go talk to Luigi. Luigi's in the game. You talk to him. And it's supposed to set up this thing where you can go hide these random, kind of like looking for the moons. And honestly, you got to hunt for moons. Okay. Well, this is. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, this would be like saying. if you go hide some balloons in this map or find a really difficult spot to get to and you hide a moon, and I get on, I got to hunt for other players' moons. Or moons, other players' balloons, and you get. I guess you get stuff for it. I'm not sure. It didn't really expand on it, but it adds this extra layer of after the campaign's done with. I mean, obviously there's like 900 something moons, so I don't like the multiplayer on Mar Mario Odyssey. Yeah, playing as the hat kind of. Yeah, yeah. That, that's like, it's like who wants to do that shit? What? Well, that just doesn't seem fun. Because if you're Mario and you go to throw the hat, then like I'm aiming at this character and I throw the hat, but then you take control of it and you go yeah. the opposite direction, then you just yeah. It doesn't... Nah, that's, nah. that's a half-ass job on multiplayer. Not on this big of a screen. Yeah, that's a half-ass <laughs> job on multiplayer. But I think the the Balloon Hunt game sounds cool. I mean, it, it does add in that multiplayer-esque stuff. Like, I yeah. can go hide a balloon, you can go hunt it down. You can hide a balloon, I can go hunt it down. And you get stuff for it. It just adds something to do in those worlds after you're done with the game. We've got next... Uh, Metal Gear Survive is out now. And it is not getting good reviews no it's not at all because i i mean honestly i need to go back and play metal gear solid 5 i've heard great things Pain of pain is amazing i, I, mean, I know i put a lot of i know still never i believe beat that never i believe beat that. it and i just put never, a lot of hours into yeah, it i just never got past probably the first couple hours and i was just kind of like and i think what it was is that i got a new console and then once i i had the chance to go back and play it, but there was so much other stuff out i never yeah. went back and played it I, I, I really think that that's a game that I probably should go back and... Well, it took me a long while. I didn't play it when it came out for but a release. But we had it, right? I, yeah, I caught it on a sale. Yeah. Bought it on a cheap sale, and then I couldn't stop playing it for about two weeks. Yeah. I probably put about 40 hours in that game, and it, it's a good open-world game. Fox Engine's amazing. This is running, running on Fox Engine, the Metal Gear Survive. Of course, it does not have Hideo Kojima in it at all. This is after the whole big breakup. But it's not getting good reviews. They're saying it's not that great, and I've read some. I'm not buying it. I mean, no. Uh, it I, would have to. It would have to go dramatically. Yeah. So I can't just for me to try. Maybe red box it. If yeah, it comes I can't on give Redbox. a personal opinion on gameplay because I haven't tried it myself. Because I'm not spending that money on that game after yeah. what I've heard. And then once you make your one main character, yep. In order to get a second character, if you want to start a new character, say you've done this one single player or whatever, played with this group, and you want a second player or character to play with these people, 
You gotta pay ten bucks just to make a second character for an, a, a second character that's slot. That's stupid as fuck. Yeah, that, that's dumb as crap. I don't that understand it. That pisses me off. That is like... Co that is like money hungry bullshit. Konami, Konami's going down the drain. They've got so many licenses that they've had in their hand. I mean, you got like Castlevania, Metal Gear, that you could have done some good yeah. stuff with, and you're just dicking it away. Like yeah. you're, you're you're screwing yourself over. I guess they make enough money in pachinko machines overseas that they don't give a shit about their games. But I know a lot of people who want another Man. Castlevania. Give us another Metroid. I, I know they don't make it, but yeah. I'm saying on the Switch. We need a yeah. Metroid. They, they do have they have announced that they're releasing Metroid Prime 4 really? for the Switch. They've just announced that they haven't said when it's coming out or what. It just says Metroid Prime 4 for the Switch. So maybe by the end of this year we get it, but I'm seeing that nah. going to be a 2019, maybe yeah. early 2020. That's going to that's gonna be next summer or yeah, later. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's yeah. It's gonna either be the end of next year or beginning of 2020. But that's okay, man. I mean, I got, I got other games to play with my yep. Switch. I mean, Zelda takes a lot of time to yep. invest time into. So then we've got a uh, next order of business. Actually, moving away from the Switch and Metal Gear, we've got uh, Paladins. The developers of Paladins High Res Studios have now announced that they are removing loot boxes out of their game. They added them in earlier in the gaming process. Uh, angered a lot of players. They lost a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of their player base due to these loot boxes. And they have said, due to all of the angered players' statements, is their main reason for removing these loot boxes out of the game. Paladins was kind of high res's competition for, uh, what's that, uh, Overwatch. Okay. Paladins was similar to that, whereas you had uh, Smite was similar to, it was a, Smite was the same people who made Smite, which was the MOBA. That's similar to League of Legends and Dota. Okay. Smite was the first, you know, MOBA to actually be the consoles, like with Xbox. They, they were on there, and then they added Paladins, which is almost exactly like Overwatch. I mean, they've got some different stuff. They've got where you can ride on a horse, the maps are a little bit bigger, but you look at Smite's characters, they look, a lot of them look a lot similar to Overwatch's, even though they say they didn't rip them off. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they're just, they're removing the loot box system because so many people were mad at it. I don't really play Paladins. I've played a little bit of Overwatch, just not my stuff. I don't care for that kind of stuff. If I want to play a multiplayer with Overwatch, yeah. I know a lot of people rave about it. it it's fun, oh God, but there is better multiplayer games to play, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the same thing with me. I mean, I understand and I see where people love it, and I do yeah. like that each character is drastically different from the next. I mean, I played Soldier seventy six when I was playing it. And it was fun, but I don't have friends that play it. I did not have a community that I could play with. Yeah, I don't know any friends so, that play it right now. But, I mean, it's it's hitting big. They just start, you know, the Overwatch League starting. The, I mean, the winner of the league for this season gets, what's it, $3.5 million for winning. What the? I, I'm starting to play it. Yeah. Like, right the fuck now. I think there's 12 teams, I believe. But it's like, a lot of them are, I mean, you've got some that are in Seoul, South Korea. One, I believe, in China, Shanghai. Then you've got a lot on the western seaboard, and two in Texas, and then some on the eastern seaboard of the U.S. Okay. But, I mean, you look at them. They've I'm got, getting on board. They've got their names. The they've mic. got their symbols. I mean, it looks like you're... If you saw the scoring and stuff and their symbols, it looked like you were watching something like NFL or something. But it's actually just Overwatch League. Like, it's mm -hmm. gotten a big, huge following. Like Call of Duty or Rainbow Six or Battlefield. They got their own, like, league shit. No, but I think Overwatch is killing them on that. I mean, they've really? actually got they've got city teams like with coaches. And, uh, it, I mean, literally, if you look at one of their teams, Los Angeles, whatever, it looks like an NFL team. Like that's how they're they're Blizzard's promoting these. killing it. Then they might not even have to make another Starcraft. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got uh, let's get that one. Fortnite Battle Royale is now 60 frames per second on every console. Yep. Well, every, you know, like Xbox One, One X, One S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro. But everything is pretty much on right now, 60 frames per second, which that's, is amazing. That's the new update that just came out, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, for a game like that, a 1 versus 100, 60 frames per second, that's double the amount it was. It was 30, so now you get 60. Yeah. That just adds that extra bit of fine-tuning to where you might have missed that shot. Now, if you've got a TV that can push 50 frames a second... When I get done with this, when I get done with this, I'm going to try out some Fortnite on 60 frames per second. That's going to be phenomenal. And then here's a little 
funny one that I've seen, but we uh, in one of our other videos we talked about Assassin's Creed Origins. They are coming out with that discovery mode. It was going to be included for free if you bought the game, or you could buy it standalone without the game. Well, due to for due to its nature of being the discovery mode, being more geared towards kids and actually learning stuff about Egypt, they have released that they are going to be covering all nude statues, private parts with seashells. So if you're going anywhere in the Alexandria or Memphis or Cai Cai I don't even know if Cairo's in there. I haven't been oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I you heard run about into this. these statues, you know, they're showing some private parts. Yeah, they're gonna but cover, they're like... Yeah. Like, so, like, girls' upper chest parts, they're going to have seashells. Men's yeah. lower, you know, groin spots. Are they trying to appeal to younger audiences with that? Yeah, they're just, you know, trying. I guess trying to hit it before it becomes an issue of this parent bought this for but the kid. But it's a mature game. The game is... And if you really not, go not historic, if you really go historically, yeah, yeah, but they show their shit. But discovery mode is I want to see also their shit. So, discovery, is, discovery mode is also sold separately, and that's more geared towards kids. It's oh, more it's of a, a learning it's on sale. Oh no, they're selling it separate. You, if you don't, you you can buy discovery mode without buying Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they're okay, selling it sense. separate. For people who maybe they didn't want their kids to play Assassin's Creed because of the violence, but they want them to get the education of Egypt and all that, yeah. you can buy the Discovery Mode separate. So for that reason, I, I believe that's why they're covering it up. But if you buy the... Okay, my question is, if you buy, if you're already on the game, like I do, Then I you get it. the Discovery Mode for free. Oh! Yeah, yeah, you get it for free. But people that I'm don't own Assassin's shit. Creed can still buy Discovery Mode separate. Okay. By itself. But I, I, that's the only thing I can see as to why they're doing this. Because, say, a parent says, oh, hey, this is educational. It's on his console. I'm going to buy this for him, but I don't want him to play all this fight and violence stuff. I'll buy this. Well, then, if they happen to walk through the door, then there's some Boobies. statue's junk or some nipples sticking out. Dick. They might be, hey, My video what just did got I buy? demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're, they're just adding that extra step, which I think is cool. I agree with it. Then we've also got Burnout Paradise is getting a remaster. Yep, I saw that. I know so there, there's huge contention as to which Burnout is the best. Some agree Paradise is, some isn't. Apparently Paradise didn't have the crash mode that a lot of people liked in the previous iteration. Is this the one that, is this the one that everyone, like like most fans, like like um, uh, went towards? Like this, Well, this was the great divide was Paradise. Was There was pre-Paradise fans and post-Paradise fans. Because there was some crash mode in some of the previous ones that people loved, and Paradise took it out, but they added a more open world, and they, they added more stuff to it. So it was a bigger game, but they took one of the things that a lot of people liked out Okay. Of it. So, I mean, there's, you know, give and take some. I mean, it's still cool. Burnout Paradise, awesome arcade racing game. I mean, you just, you race, you crash into shit. Yeah. I guess it, it's cool. I never really got into the Burnouts. So I, honestly, I don't, know the, I don't know the hate for the new, uh, for the new... Uh, burn it. No, not Burnout. Uh, Need, Need for, for Speed. Speed. Need for Speed, man. I, I like it. See, back when Burnout was around, I was a Need for Speed Underground fan. I played yeah. Need for Speed Underground. I didn't play Burnout. But, but honestly, I have never in my life finished a racing game. <laughs> I like them, but it's like... I wonder if I it's, like a, it. it's like I gotta be in the mood yeah. to do it. Like, I mean... but I After mean, watching a Fast and Furious movie... I'm definitely going to go play a racing game after yeah. I watch a Fast and Furious movie because I'm in the mood. But yes, yeah. I do have to be in the mood for those kinds of games because I'm just not... Sometimes you just want to relax and stuff and man, it can be pretty stressful trying to race on a, a racing yeah. thing. Yeah, true. Then we also got Bungie Delay's release of several new features to Destiny 2, including Nightfall-specific weapons. Apparently they were going to come out with weapons you can only get in the Nightfall Reducing the drop or, drop rate for duplicates because I know I used I was a Destiny fan. I played the mess out. I put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours on Destiny One and Destiny Two, and I got I can't tell you how many times I got duplicates. Get an exotic Ingram, boom, same thing. I get two, three exotic Ingrams, open them all up, and there's been quite a few times all three of them are the same damn thing. Yep, pisses me off. So they were supposed to fix that, reducing drop rate of duplicates. And viewing vendors in a companion app on your phone. So you can go in and actually view what they're selling and yeah. stuff on your phone without actually logging in the game. Well, all of that has been delayed till March. They said they need some more time for fine-tuning. So, but, I mean, but Bungie needs to 
get Bungie needs to bring it. it. Yeah, bring it back, man. Because shit you're lo- you're losing. There's other shit that's coming out. I mean, I'm, I'm, was... I'm just being honest. When Red Dead Redemption Two comes mm-hmm. out, well, nothing they... else is going to matter at that point. Well, they lost because they me. gotta they gotta. Who? I mean, Bungie lost me. I mean, I was, you know me, I was a hardcore yeah, Destiny were. 1 fan. Yeah. And I was, I mean, an, an evangelist on Destiny 2. And I even defended it at the beginning. And I was like, no, no, I, I still love it. It's still a fun game. Well, once I hit that end game, and it just... I did too. I just was like, man, what am I... I still would get on and try to play. I got Curse of Osiris, felt let, let down by that. There was some cool stuff they added, but there was not enough in-game progression yeah. and in, in, end-game systems right. for me to keep going. Right. Like, why am I logging in? Like, uh, there's no point. Right, right. I mean, you run around, and I mean, you can only log in so much time and, do and the get same a bunch shit. of bullshit. And, well, and do it's the same kind of, shit 50 yeah. times, and I'm not... Yeah. I don't feel rewarded for it. And then, and then you don't even have friends that are on there to, to go with you. You gotta, I mean, I don't know. I mean, their player base has dropped so much, man. So much. Like, it was up in the, like, 4 million I really, range I really when thought Destiny that 2 came Destiny out. was going to be taken over when Destiny they 2 came screwed out. Up, yeah. Because, I, honestly, I, I don't give a shit what anybody says. I enjoyed playing Destiny 1 than I did playing Destiny 2. Destiny 2, the storyline was great. The storyline, everything was cool. Graphics After were cool. After that is where you, you, you dropped the ball. Once it's After done, campaign. it's done. And it's like there's nothing else to be offered. No, try to make it more casualized. Try to make it where the casual gamer can get in. That's not... You Give us some more modes. Base. Keep your fan base. You just lost them. Give us some more modes or something. Give I mean, us YouTubers something. that were making their living on Destiny, YouTubers and Twitch streamers that were... That was all they did was Destiny have quit and went on to other games because they're they're not making money because right. people don't care. They don't want to see it want, Nobody cares to see it anymore. It, it, it's... It's done. <laughs> then we also got off the subject of bus, uh, Bungie because that's kind of a tender spot for me. That that very angers me what they did to a game that I loved and was one of my favorite games. Yeah. We're gonna move on to Death Stranding. Now Troy Baker and Emily O'Brien join the Death Stranding cast. Is that the one with uh, Norman Reedus? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, it's that looks the Hideo amazing. Kojima. That's PlayStation. Yeah, pay, PlayStation exclusive. Hideo Kojima's first game away from Konami. Um, we got Troy Baker, who was in Last of Us, Infinite, In- Infamous Second Son, Bioshock Infinite, and I believe he was also, uh, wasn't he the Batman in Batman Telltale and Dying Light? I mean, Troy Baker's done a lot. I mean, he's, oh, man, he's, he's all over. The- he's one of the most dominant voice actors in the video game business. His, his main thing is Uncharted, though. But this, uh, well, well, I mean, Last he, of he, Us. The, yeah, the Uncharted legacy, he's in that. And then you've got Emily. Last of Us, yeah. And then you got Emily O'Brien, Phenomenal. who I don't know. I had to look her up. I wasn't that name wasn't familiar to me. Like Troy Baker, I know Troy Baker. I've played multiple games with him in it. Emily O'Brien. The only thing I could come up with was she was Gamora in the Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy series. Okay. She played Gamora, and then she was also in like some TV stuff, Days of Our Lives, and stuff, the soap operas. Okay. But she's joining this Death Stranding cast, and then we've got. It looks great. Graphically. It looks like some weird shit on some do, stuff. It, it does look like weird. I don't. Is it gonna? Gameplay's be... not. I, I know the game and gameplay's not gonna be as weird as what he was putting out. Yeah, I, I hope not because I hope it's not more of a movie than it is a game. No. You know what I'm saying? He's he's. I mean, he done right by the Metal Gear franchise the until gameplay? he left. Ah, uh, man. I mean, I think this game is uh, uh, still a ways off. I mean, I think maybe at the earliest. This was end, our small glimpse. The earliest I see this is maybe the end of next year, if not the end of 2020. I, it's it's going to be, be a ways off. It's, it, it's got to be 2020. I mean, if they push it, maybe December of next year, but otherwise it's going to be end of 2020. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's got to it's gotta be 2020, man. And the last bit of news I got for video games is Monster Hunter World, which is my new favorite game. That took the place of Destiny, which... Like I said, got a little tender spot for that. I loved it. I spent many hours in it. They bungee screwed me. So Monster Hunter has now taken that void. I love it. Can't stop playing it. Fantastic game. But I, it leads U.S. sales in January. So I hear nothing but great things about it. I feel like that I'm missing out on something that I need to go back on it. But every time that I go and play a game, I'm either playing UFC, Call of Duty World War II, or um, 
Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, I mean, I was... Or Friday the 13th I'm gonna game. tell the truth. Monster That's just, is definitely not for everybody. No, 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 no. I understand that. But I want to give it that chance because I want to... I, I, I want to understand. I want to yeah. I want to know. I'd love for you to give it a chance and try and us play together. But I do know your game style. I mean, we've been friends for years. I know your gaming style. You're going to have to get over that first initial hump of the, you know, cat being your buddy and this little you yeah, know, cartoony yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, Once yeah. you get into the mechanics of it and the aspects of it, it is a lot deeper than it looks. But I guess I want a more grittier Yeah, monster you want realistic. Hunter. I want a more grittier Monster Hunter game. I think yeah. that's what I'm expecting. Like a more mature rated. Yeah. Bloody. Yeah. Freaking like we're, realistic. Like we're going after Godzilla or yeah, uh, Akaju or whatever they're fucking called. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I, I got one little last bit of note here real quick. Game Engine developer Unity has teamed up now with IBM to bring the Watson AI to video games. They're, they're adding that Watson AI, which is their IBM. What the fuck is that? That, that Watson AI? You haven't seen that one? That's no. like, that's like IBM's huge AI, it like beat one of the world chess players at chess. It's, it's this oh, okay. huge. Like now I, I can pull up my phone and my weather channel app, it says, has Watson AI in it. Like, I mean, it's like it's some revolutionary AI that's been around for some years that IBM's made, and they continue to iterate and upgrade to some amazing thing. And now they have partnered with Unity to bring it to video games to add this extra, extra aspect. So okay. maybe some of these games where you get these dumbass AIs that just run around and stuff, maybe that might help it. They said it's going to use cloud storage and all this other stuff, so... Who knows? I don't know much about it. I just know I see Watson AI on a bunch of crap on TV, on my phone, and that they have are now incorporating that into video games, which can, as far as I'm concerned, can only help us. It makes the game better, and I'm down for it. Yeah. But that is it with my video game news. You got anything to add, sir? Yeah. Movie talk is next. Watch this. What's brewing in the movie business today? Uh, well, first... Since we're still in games, I'm just gonna give this throw out there. There's a uh, a new update for the Friday the Thirteenth game. You know that I'm a fan of that, and uh, you know I've been trying to get you on board for that yeah. shit for a while. Uh, there's a new grab animation. Instead of him just like walking up, basically, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, instead of him just walking up and grabbing you by the neck and then doing it and him standing still. He kind of grabs you by the neck and he takes a few steps, so it kind of looks more lifelike, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a big update, but it's it makes it look a little better. Yeah, and slowly this game is so constantly I'm not, I'm not evolving, getting better. Yeah, evolving me on the four v one type aspect. I'm just not a big fan on the whole one person's a monster, or this person, and there's a whole group fighting. It's yeah, just, I'm not... it, it it's better than evolve though, no. <laughs> in this sense. So. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just a small thing in the gaming industry right now that that uh, I can add to the table. Um, next is uh, Jurassic World Three has already been confirmed and it already has a release date uh, with June eleventh, two thousand twenty one. I mean, shit, the first one was amazing. I love Chris Pratt. Anything I see Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt in now, I'm gonna watch. So yeah. that just makes me more excited. Yeah, he better be in that one. Yeah, I mean they're gonna have to keep them in there, and yeah. and uh, so um, this tells me right here, uh, and I think Colin Trevera, I think I'm saying his name correctly. He's the he's the director on the second film that's coming out, uh, Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. I can't, on one, one, I can't oh wait on that one. I can't wait either, man. I, don't, I I just that's two days after my wife's birthday. That yeah. is like our birthday yeah. date. We're going to watch that movie. Yeah. She's a huge fan of Jurassic Park. I am Park. too. My wife is Even as well. Even the crappy ones she loves. Like yeah. so we're 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 going to watch I need to, to rewatch watch Jurassic Park 3. Uh and Jurassic Park the Lost World. The Lost World, yeah, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Honestly, I like all of them. I think I, I like people, the Lost World. I think I remember liking some of them, it. but I still enjoy watching every one of them. But with Jurassic World 3, <clears throat> here's my thing. With them already confirming this before Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom comes out... Oh, I know it's going to be a success. Are they, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do they already know that they're like, oh, they're seeing it in the editing process. They're like, oh, this <clears throat> is going to be epic. I think This that's, is going to uh, make bank just like the first one. I think film. that's Disney's MO, though. Look at them with the uh, Marvel stuff, Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, They were releasing stuff back in what, 2015 saying they, they had this 
whole little roadmap to 2020, telling yeah. us movies that were going to be released in 2020 five years before. Right. Like so, I think that's right. just Disney's MMO or MO of, hey, I'm gonna we're we're gonna go ahead and let you know this is coming out. Well, here's my thing, is I'm hoping that's the case. But if we think back just to last year, whenever uh, the Mummy with Tom Cruise and they tried to start this dark universe, yeah, now they're rebooting it again. And they they? they announced <clears throat> so many movies in the works: The Invisible Man, The Bride of Frankenstein. They're like they seemed so confident with Tom well, Cruise as the Mummy. But... No, it wasn't Disney. It was Universal. But, but look, before that, like they had Dracula Untold. That was supposed to be the original start that of the universe. That was supposed yeah. to be. And then they decided, oh, no, we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to toss that to the side. Even though I love Dracula Untold, I thought it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. But they were like, no, no, it didn't do yeah. well enough. Mummy's going to be our start. And we're, we're hiring Tom Cruise, who's this big-name actor. And then it Yeah. I felt like he took... I liked the movie overall. I'm not going to hate on this movie because I'm going to say there are enjoyable moments about yeah, it. I enjoyed it. it I think that Tom Cruise was miscast. I think it should have been somebody else that was not... I mean, all you thought was... Tom Cruise through the whole movie. It's like, this is Tom Cruise. Well, that's that's what they promoted. Yeah. that's I mean, literally, it was promoted Tom Cruise. Well, I mean, he's one of the biggest names Tom Cruise, in Hollywood. the mummy. Like, it was like his name was promoted over the name of the movie. Right, right. They were pushing him. But I mean, it. but they had Johnny Depp as, as the Invisible Man that they were supposed to come out with. They had... Uh, Bride of Frankenstein well, that was supposed can't. to be Angelina Jolie. But they canned they, all that? They canned all that. Um, I don't know what they're going to do now. Right now, I'm kind of like, are yeah, they going to continue I've heard with the Dark Universe? That they said after a moment they were rebooting it or they were rethinking it and they were thinking what they were going to do with it now. Yeah. But just because you have one movie a little falter, yeah. continue with it. That's what, I mean, yeah. look at DC. Find your I mean, faults they faltered. and adapt. But, yes. But don't can it. Oh, well, this one didn't do well. I'm just going to throw this away even though I told all the fans no. I hope this isn't the same case with Jurassic World 3. I really don't. Yeah, just, because I, I, I'm i hoping that Jurassic World 2... I don't see into. Disney throwing that. Yeah. When, once they announce it, it's probably going to come. But with that freaking... like you Seeing said, that second trailer gives me high hopes. Because I was like, wow... This looks amazing. Even though we're doing the same thing as the first one, we're like, oh, we got a mutated dinosaur. Yeah. We're doing the blah, 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 blah. But it was awesome. And he fought T-Rex. I mean, yeah. shit. That was yeah. epic. That And they're running up under the feet. I mean, I loved it. But it, it did lack the suspense and... and, and well, it took a more action oh, approach. Yeah, more than yeah. The first one had a little bit of horror to it where that one took more of the action. I just wanted to see the Indominus Rex... Break through the park like the pterodactyls did and start yeah. eating people. That's yeah, what I was yeah. expecting. I was like, what? They're, they kept saying, it's headed straight for the park. Well, that motherfucker didn't head to the park till the ne end of the movie when everybody Everybody was, was gone. Yeah. I was like, man. You thought he would have made it there pretty quickly. Yeah. I would have rather seen an Indominus Rex tearing through the park than pterodactyls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even though some of that stuff was cool with the pterodactyls, but it was somewhat was goofy. But it still would have been cool with the big ass dinosaur like pulling people up. Like I mean, back in the old ones, ripping people Just apart, eating this person, stomping on this person, yeah. eating this person. But it is I mean, Disney over it again. Yeah. So they're gonna tone down the violence. I mean, we well, have movies man. where people are getting ripped up, blood coming down in water. I mean, but Disney kind of wants Jurassic, to tone it down. A Jurassic little World bit. was kind of violent. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm if you think about it. Off. Yeah. If you think about it. But anyways. That's that. Uh, so, yeah, Jurassic World 3 is confirmed and set to date with uh, same director, Colin Trevera, uh, June 11, 2021. So we will keep you updated on that as time goes. Real quick before we end on that, when you were talking about the Universal, the, yeah. the monster, you know, cinematic universe, mm -hmm. I still hope that it's somewhere in the works because that would be amazing. I mean, yeah. we've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've got, you know, DC Comics Cinematic Universe. I mean, you've got all this different stuff. It'd be cool to have a horror person's cinematic universe. Yeah. Incorporate all these different horror franchises. Right. And horror fan favorites from back from the 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, even 70s, 80s, 90s. But start incorporating some of this together into a cinematic universe where they are in the same world. They incorporate. They intermingle in some aspects. Right. That would be amazing. Yep. Yep. I just hope they don't trash that Universal. Right. Right. <laughs> so moving on, uh, Jessica Chastain is in early talks to play the adult version of Beverly in the It Chapter 2 film. Uh, 
this was kind of a fan-made thing at first. They were kind of like, you know, there's a lot of things on Facebook, YouTube, um, all over the place, Twitter. That was... So on to the next topic. Uh, Jessica Chastain is in talks to play the adult version of Beverly in the It Chapter 2 film. I love the first film. Uh, this was actually a fan-made thing. I don't know if this is how it's gotten done. I know that Andy uh, Mush Muschietti, I think that's his name, is the director of the film. He played, he directed Mama, which had Jessica Chastain in it. So they already have, you know, they already have background together. They already have film history together. So I don't know if that was already in the works. But a lot of people, because of Beverly, the young girl, which was one of the better characters in yeah. the It Chapter oh, dude, 1 the, movie. The new It was amazing. I think Jessica Love Chastain it. would be a great character. I think that with her star power, I'm pretty sure she's pretty expensive. And I know this is going to have a higher budget than the first film. But I'm pretty sure she's pretty expensive. I don't know if you want to spend it on her or what you want to do. It's a... I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. It's kind of like, do you want a no-name actor as the adult version? Uh, somebody mm. that's a good actress? and, and Or do you want somebody that is well-known? I would kind of want somebody well-known. Do I you mean, really? If, if you're going to turn that one into the more dominant role, yeah, then maybe somebody more well-known because you could run into the thing of it's a not a known character and all of a sudden you're in the B-movie territory yeah. where that person does do shitty and you're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I just you know, we screwed the we screwed the whole movie up by this shitty one person because they were supposed to be the dominant. Right. But now, on the flip side of that counter argument, <clears throat> you could find the next big actress that way. Find them unknown. That's what I'm saying. Uh, an unknown actress. I mean, I'm sure they do a lot of takes and a lot of screening to find to make sure this is a perfect fit. If you could find that unknown actress that fits that role, yeah, that is not known, you could save some money. Right. And, and have a great out, performance. And you could come out starting her career, but also boosting your movie because people aren't watching it for that person. They're looking at, right. they're watching that person due to the role they're playing, not because it's this, like what well, like we just said with Tom Cruise. Right. It, they're not watching it because that person's playing the role. They're watching it because of the content. Honestly, I <clears throat> think that Jessica Chastain is a fantastic choice and great to consider it. But do I want her to play as Beverly in the movie? I don't know with this type of film. It's according to how they're going to take. That's the question. Is what take are they going to take It Chapter 2? Because the, the, the miniseries back in 1990, the It Chapter 2 part of it, when they're adults, was the one that was the weakest. I, I, honestly, and, I and, barely remember that because I, and, all I remember is the first part. Yeah. So that maybe, part scared me as a child. So I, maybe they're trying to do something really epic with it. That would be great. I hope so. But I'm, I'm just saying... I would like for them to extend this universe. Because, I mean, heck, you've, you've got to look. Stephen King's books subtly incorporate with each other. Yeah. I mean, you've got, what was it, 11-22-63? Has it in it. It's on Hulu. The guy in... And you can buy it in Best Buy and yeah, Walmart. The main character in that movie and, well, in that book. I don't know about in the... the episodes the series but in that book he goes to the town where it is and <clears throat> he's before that it's before it was found out and he goes there and, and hears about these kids being killed yeah and this story of all these kids being killed like he incorporates his books subtly into his other books yeah so i hope that it doesn't end at chapter two okay. i would like yeah. for it to keep going i would too i would <clears throat> like to see it maybe in a, a two-part you know, like, like, let's expand this we'll because it. you know they don't they don't really <clears throat> touch on. Uh, there's this thing called the turtle in the mm -hmm. book that's like his nemesis or something. I don't really know. I think that would be too far fetched for the movie. But but I mean they haven't really told you what he is, what his powers are. Like I mean if he's coming back, obviously they didn't kill him. So it'd be nice if maybe in chapter two they think they do or yeah. something. But movie there's a thin line where you go from horror horror drama. Which that's where the first film is yeah. to horror sci-fi, and yeah. you could lose your target audience. What was that uh, Dreamcatcher? I like it, but even that's though a the second, yeah, it, it, the second half it should have been a three-part movie or a two-part movie or something. It's a very rushed film. Mm -hmm. I love the first half. The first hour of that film 
the first hour and 15 minutes, I love it. But the second half, it was kind of like, whoa, we're here, we're there, we're there. If you look at Stephen King, a lot of his stuff is, yeah. ends up being something sci-fi. Yeah. I mean, even all his horror stuff somehow, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it turns into sci-fi. But I would like them to not go that route. Yeah. Kind of leave with it, leave the sci-fi out of it because you're going to lose a lot of your audience. But, I mean, make it to where... You know, he doesn't die on the end of this next one. He goes somewhere else, like new new locations, new. I mean, but keep it going. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, it was great. I love that. Uh, movie. I, yeah, I, I love it. It the chapter one film. One of the best movies. Oh, dude, of I love year. the new one. Where's your mask? That's what I got. Yeah, it's right behind us, man. Right, yep, that yep. mask right there. I mean, yeah. I have a short film. Amazing. Go back on my videos. Watch the short film. It's it's pretty entertaining. It's not the best short film, but it's entertaining as fuck. All right, so staying on the the it topic, uh, Ben that plays the the kid Ben in the first film, Jeremy Ray uh, Taylor, uh, he's just now added to the cast of Goosebumps two. Uh, kid in the first what? It. In it. Yeah, it's right. the, the, that's not the, the new, Stranger the, Things kid, is it? No, 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 no. Oh, he's okay. the he's the the chunky kid. He's the oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha. Yeah, okay. He, okay. he's Ben. Um, basically, in the miniseries, they focus more on his character. In the newer film, they <coughs> kind of dabbled into it, but not much. Um, I'm sure it's going to play a bigger role in the second in, in the second chapter too, but because uh, there's like a love triangle thing going on with Beverly and um, yeah, huh? Talk a little louder. Oh, and. Uh, well, Goosebumps 2 just added him. I don't know what character he's going to hmm. play. I don't know what he's casted as. So they're making a second Goosebumps? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, the Jack that Black a, one? Yep, yep. I, I honestly... I love it. I enjoy the shit out of yeah, that movie. Yeah, it was like, fun as my, shit. Me and my wife sat down and watched it. And dude, I've watched my childhood come to fruition. And they, like, I, I read them books. I loved them books. And that movie... Dude, I, I would love for them to... Instead of trying to generalize all the books like they did in the first movie kind of narrow down to a specific few yeah now, like, like you already got your audience now so let, let let's break it down a little bit yeah and draw, draw it, it out. into a specific um, thing yeah because uh and now that now because of the success of goosebumps they have started to work on the uh, uh are you afraid of the dark series i love and that man, nickelodeon that, oh. i love it i love it i can't wait to get a big box set of that and introduce oh, it to my I, kids yes i watched the watch it over out of are you afraid of the dark on nickelodeon <sighs> and it even has a little match where they and it blows out oh man oh oh uh, just the love that show yeah yeah Yep, it was phenomenal. So are they rebooting it or no? No, no they're just really releasing they're, it. They're making a film out of it. Oh, okay. They're, they're starting a movie out of it. From what so I that, know, that would be cool. But I would like to have that T television I guess, yeah. series. But maybe a Netflix thing. Yes, Netflix. But make it not towards children like it used to be. Make it towards children or people that were children when that first one came out. Make yep. it towards them. Yeah. The people like us who grew up with that show now make it more adult, adult focused, for the people that grew up with it. Right. Don't try to get a new audience with the new kids. You have all these people that done watched it when they were kids. Now make it more mature, more dork, uh, dork, adult focused. Who's a dork? <laughs> Me. But uh, adult focused, and draw those people in that watched it when they were a kid. Make yeah. it more gritty, more yeah. realistic, just, more just, visceral. Just, just it doesn't have to be. Kitty, kitty. It can be just a little bit darker, but yeah. PG thirteen ish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just a little darker. But still, to draw on the the fans like me that Get watched it as a kid. I don't want. Yeah. Don't make it feel like we're watching a Disney film. Make it seem like we're watching. Dude, when I turn on Disney Kids or Nickelodeon Kids type stuff, and I'm watching their little live yeah. action drama shows or comedies, that they suck. Like I'm just like, like Girl Meets World. I love Boy Meets World. Grew up with it. I watched it from beginning to end. Yeah. Growing up, I watched Girl Meets World, and I just could not get into it. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cheesy. This is not geared towards a grown male, <laughs> like uh, yeah. not at all. Yeah. But hey, Definitely. I just don't want that to happen with Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. And then uh, also, it was announced that uh, moving on to another topic is that uh, Blair Witch Project is is series is in the work. I I don't know, I don't know much about it. I just saw it briefly. Uh, I don't know if they're going to play off the films or if they're going to go on their own 
Like, kind of same area, but separate. Yeah, they're all in the same story thought uh, of a Blair Witch Project, but they're going to do their own thing. Um, I definitely don't want to see episodes and episodes of them just hanging out in the woods. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, I, I ain't gonna lie. Now, I know I'll, the first movie got a lot of hype and a lot of a lot of stuff. That movie sucked. Did you opinion. see the the newer one, Blair Witch? The the newest one. Yeah. No. I oh, you know. need to see it, man. It, it, it's better. It's kind of like a remake, but it's got I hope so. that little first, spice stuff. Well, see, that first one kind of threw me off, and I did not, uh, I mean, I thought I'll it was honestly, boring, I fell asleep in it, uh, it sucks. The second one, what was it? Blair Witch, uh, Book of Shadows. I, I enjoyed that one more than the first I one. I did, too. I thoroughly I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Book of Shadows, even though there were some, some con like, like, there were some issues with it. But and I wanted to There's go in a different crazy direction. There's some crazy shit going on. Yeah, and it was cool. But I really enjoyed it. I, honestly, like I, it's been on my mind recently, and I'm like, man, I want to watch that film again. Oh, it's way better than the first one. Yeah, I mean that was that was creepier and had a better thing going on. Yeah. I got to know the characters. I got to see their interactions. Yeah, I understood what was going on compared to Blair Witch, the first one, where it was just some. Stone kids in the woods. Hey, let's make a movie with this freaking black and white camera. I'm like, yeah. I'm just sorry. I mean, you did great on your advertising, but your movie sucks. Yeah. I mean, let's get rid of the realistic approach. We already know it's not real, so let's make a good film out of it. Blair Witch yes. 2, The Book of Shadows, was a good attempt. <clears throat> it was not the best. Um, Dude, have some crazy, creepy, freaky ass Blair Witch. Like, yeah. have some. And then, like, the DVD had some, on. like, if you watch it backwards, you see different symbols and shit like that. I remember like Dude. watching the show. I'm like, what the fuck? Especially if it's a series going on. I mean, you can incorporate, say, there are multiple different groups in this woods at one time because that's a huge area, and just mm -hmm. have it throughout the series alternate between the different groups and the Blair Witch fucking them up. You know, this episode Give focuses me more on this fucking... one. This one, like, but. Give me a fucking witch in the woods. Yeah, attacking like, the shit out of people and freaking doing that, shit to that, their mind. That's that's the the third act of the new Blair Witch movie. Like I said, do five different groups. You get groups. that. You get that. And like, I, and I like what they did. the uh, The rest of the movie felt like the same fucking movie as the first one. But that that climax of Blair Witch saved the whole damn movie because it was kind of like okay well they took a different approach when they made it yeah. to the cabin and they finally well, dude, I could see, see the witch and all that kind of shit I can see this one go and like have like a boy scout group here have some teenagers wanting to go get drunk and stoned away from their parents for a weekend have you know or some Sounds college like Friday kids the 13th. have some other you know family over here camping with family with kids and just have different groups and somehow they're in these woods together when the Blair Witch comes out to attack the shit out of folks. And somehow maybe this group runs into this group on this episode. Or, you know, but have the Blair Witch alternate between attacking the different groups. Or somehow the groups hit each other while the witch is attacking. Or fucking with this group. And yeah. just incorporate it that way. Show it from different views. Mm -hmm. Have different groups dealing with her all at the same time. Right. And then maybe near the end have all the groups come together. Right. I, I agree with Minus that. Minus a few people that died on the way. <laughs> I agree with that. We don't know anything. This was just announced, so uh, maybe a few days ago. So we'll see. We'll I hope it's you... better. Yeah, I hope it's better than the first movie. Yeah, we'll keep uh, you that. You need to see the new one. Just yes, to, I do need yeah, to see the just, new one. I, I think you'll enjoy it more. Um, so uh, okay, now we're getting into the Halloween 2018 theory and predictions since the movie is wrapped in. Filming production. Uh, now it's in post production. So basically, there's a lot of videos out here for Halloween 2018 theories and predictions. I'm going to give you mine. I'll put a link in the description of like when to skip to this part of the video if this is all you want to see. But uh, Halloween 2018, basically, with all the pictures that we see, we see a lot of familiar. Fam What's the word? Familiarity of of certain scenes from the original. We see the part where he's uh, uh, not actually Michael, but they're kind of hiding the mask right now. But we see uh, the the sheets on the uh, clothesline outside in the backyard where he was standing. We see where he killed his sister. We see it looks like the same room, the same vanity mirror, the same setup and everything. I'm kind of like, what? Are, how are they gonna? 
integrate that within this new film. I see a lot of predictions of what they're going to do with this film. I just want to give you my theories and prediction on this movie. Because we've got Laurie Strode, which is Jamie Lee Curtis. We have It's confirmed Judy Greer is playing her daughter. And then they got a granddaughter that's going to be the main uh, protagonist. Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind at the moment. But basically, she's going to be the main lead. So this is how I see it. Because Dr. Loomis is dead. They're going back to the original. It's a sequel to the original. I don't think that they're going to... I don't think they're going to tamper with or change anything up from the original Halloween movie where Michael Myers stands up, Michael, Dr. Loomis shoots him six times out the balcony window. He goes out there. He's missing. Okay? I don't think they're going to fuck with that. I think they're going to add on to that. Halloween 2 picked up from there. But no, but that wasn't John Carpenter's vision. So they're scrapping all that. I think they said that he's going to get apprehended. At the end of the, uh, you know, after after the events. I mean, the Dr. Loomis character, as long as they have permission from the estate and everything else, they could add him in CGI like they've done other I don't people. want them to do that, though. And maybe just enough to kill him off or just not talk about no, it. No, I, I think basically... Like you mentioned, know, he had a heart attack after the incident I, I, or something I think crazy. the movie is going to open up with us seeing the ending of the first film on the big screen. And that's going to get our fucking... That's going to get just everyone going like oh my god you know i'm watching this on the big screen just the very ending where they shoot him out the at the very tail ending and then he's missing dr loomis goes downstairs he's missing out of the yard and then that's it then halloween 2 picks up and he's in but people's they're, houses they're just gonna mention dr loomis i mean i, I have think, a different person i think what i think i think what's going this is my idea is i think that Along the way, you're going to hear sirens, you're going to hear police pull up, blah, blah, blah. They're all searching the town for Michael Myers. They find him. They apprehend him. He goes back to the mental institution that he broke out of. And basically, it cuts from that to... Two years later or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Two years later when Jamie Lee Curtis, I think, is going to play more of a Dr. Loomis character. She's going to be studying Michael now. So they just... Not gonna mention it, but it's been long enough for Doctor Loomis say passed in dialogue, away or what heart attack, whatever stroke. They, whatever. Yeah, they're gonna say in dialogue that Doctor Loomis is dead because he's dead in real life. Yeah, uh, Donald Pleasance, rest in peace. But they're gonna say that you know he's dead. I could see like Jamie Lee Curtis sitting at her desk if she's like a therapist or something. And she's studying Michael. Maybe she even keeps the mask that Michael uses to kind of try to study him and try to bring out the demons in within him. I don't know, uh, but I think that she would keep a picture. of Donald Pleasance on her table and she's kind of glancing at it. The picture kind of pans at it. Um, I think that she, while she's studying him and all that kind of stuff, I think Michael, she was, he was, in the original, he wasn't her sister. It, they weren't brother and sister. That didn't come out until the second one. So they said they're getting rid of that aspect. He was infatuated with her in the 1978 film of Halloween. That's why he kept on. But she's the one that got away. But now she's the one that's studying him and I think that he finds out somehow he she has a granddaughter. He becomes infatuated with her. He's going to break out again, get his mask somehow, either break into her office or into Kevin's room. I even thought about a badass scene of like, maybe, no, let's I mean, say, let's maybe kill her. You know, maybe yeah. she gets, this is her exit out of the thing, out yeah. of the franchise. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I want her to be a little bit more in the film. I mean, maybe she's sitting at her computer desk after a study or something. Yeah. He broke out and then all of a sudden he breaks in. Stabs her to death in her office chair, takes his mask with her blood smeared on it, and then takes yeah, it off. That that that's an idea. Um, but or he could just break out, get the mask, and be on the hunt for her daughter. For some reason, maybe he's seen pictures, maybe he's seen mm. something within these years that he's been incarcerated. She's trying to get between the two. Yeah, and basically, Lori Strode has to save the day for her daughter, uh, for her granddaughter. So and, get between Michael and right. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's okay. Good I can I can see that. And, or he could break out, make his way to the police station, and I could see this being a badass scene. This is a a throwback scene to Halloween Six with Paul Rudd, um, where he's like slicing and dicing all the doctors and shit like that and throwing them off. What if he just, you know, he's just a shape. He's just evil incarnated. And what if he was just walking the streets? He he broke out the. The same asylum, everybody's looking for him, but he's just like mosey on along and just walks straight into the police station at Haddonfield, slices everybody because it's a small town, 
kills everybody in there, gets to the evidence room, finds his mask that's all dusty and kind of aged over the years, puts that bitch back on. I think that would be a fucking mm. dope scene. And and then he and then he he continues on his rampage. He goes back after Lori Strode's daughter. Now they are saying that it's going to be more of a neighborhood thing, um, like the that like the original film. So we know we're going to get a lot of throwback scenes, a low throwback shots of the first film. What if that Lori Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, because I've seen all these images with where he killed his daughter, where he killed his sister when he was six years old. In front of the vanity mirror, and they're showing these shots from the set. That's like he's in looks, front of that vanity mirror. Looks just like that. yeah, it's that same set. It's like why is he mm. there in adult form again? Yeah, yeah. So my After the fact. my question is is maybe it's an Easter egg. Maybe it's a new vanity set. Maybe yeah. that's the granddaughter's. Maybe right. That's, it, it it could be. But what if Jamie Lee Curtis, since she's been studying him all this year, maybe she brings some demons out of him, and it's like makes him remind. What he did when he was a child, back there, and maybe it flashes back to him being like adult oh, form, flashback, oh, okay, and and in the room, and he's kind of like, you know, and it's kind of fucking with the psyche. Maybe Jamie Lee Curtis, that's his advantage towards him and to beat him is fucking with the psyche yep. since he studied him, fuck with the mind, like Doctor Loomis. I would think that that would be a cool approach on the film. Um, the movies basically done besides the post-production we're getting another one in october and uh john carpenter's giving his blessing and he's talking about doing the score which we don't know officially yet but he's talking about it so let's hope that he does i think this is going to be great i think this is going to be what fans has been wanting for years we're swiping away all the sequels i know i talk about this on the last couple episodes but this is what's going on right now. And this is just my theories and predictions on the film. Judy Greer, I don't know. Uh, I know it's going to be the mom of the granddaughter, the daughter of Laurie Strode. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I would assume that Jamie Lee Curtis would get killed in this one in a more heroic fashion than in Halloween Resurrection. Um, the main thing that I want is that I know that a lot of people are saying that this is going to be the, to end John Carpenter's vision and to kill off Michael Myers. If you kill off Michael Myers, you're not ever going to officially kill off Michael Myers. You need to keep it open-ended. Maybe he'll die, or it looks like he dies, but keep it open-ended because I want to see further slasher movies come. I want them to be resurrected, and I want to see more. Freddy, Jason... Michael, all this shit. Mm -hmm. I want this shit to come back. I am tired of the Amityville. I'm tired of the Exorcist. I am tired of Paranormal I, Activity. Paranormal <laughs> Activity. I am tired of well, we all this. But we didn't get it. We didn't get it. Give it, us. I'll take it. Conjuring. Give, I'll take Conjuring. Give us slashers. Don't make them too B movie ish. Give them some serious, action packed, horror, suspense driven, like The Strangers horror movies of of these yeah. circuit. Bring them back to the horror roots. And I hope this film does it. But that is my theory and prediction of this new film. You can agree with me. Leave your comments down below. But that is what I think. Dave McCray has put a whole video up about this. So, yeah. Go watch his video and then come back and watch ours and uh, see which one you more relate to. What Which version would you want to see more? And Lee McCoy with Drum Dumbs, he has uh, some some theories as well. He has a great channel. I'll leave his link in the description. Love that guy. Love everything he does over there at Drum Domes. That's all I got. Theories and predictions on Halloween 2018. You got anything else, Martin? No. Not at all. <laughs> That's it. I'm not the movie man. I feel like I, just, I feel I, like I lost this guy for a yep, minute. I just watch movies. I definitely have not. I've watched maybe one or two Halloweens. I don't. No, I just I, on, honestly I like H two O. That's why I'm the game guy. I like H two O. I like He's Josh. Guy. I like Josh Hartnett as a character. I would love to see him come back. Honestly, like let, let, let's Next forget. Thing I saw him in was Penny Dreadful. Yeah, right. But let's forget Halloween Resurrection. Let's pick up after H two O. You know what I'm saying? Like even though that like that didn't have a Haddonfield vibe to it, it's more of a school 
and all that kind of stuff, and it didn't really feel like Halloween, it was still an enjoyable film, and, and Josh Hartnett, back in the day, with the faculty, with Black Hawk Down... It's like we're running a Halloween podcast yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, like... I really think that I really think that um, they're losing some star quality. With uh, I think I think at least they should bring him back. I'm sorry, Josh Hartnett. You're my boy. I don't know you, but you're still my boy. Sorry that they didn't add you back. All right, are we done? I think so. That's all that's brewing in the gaming industry and in the movie industry. We we'll see you back next week at on Friday. Same time. Y'all take it easy. And uh, you can catch it right here. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this. Do whatever you want. But just be back here Friday. Bitches. I wouldn't put the bitches in. <laughs> Fuckers.